We got a. Please stand. One of them during the bells during church. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Our service begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Together we will say the glory on page 356. <clears throat> glory to God in the highest and peace to His people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of every human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of Him who humbled Himself to share our humanity. Your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with You in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Pro pro <clears throat> proclaim, give, proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I'm going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child, and those in labor, together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will tell them, walk, walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height, on the height of Zion and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their, 
their fill of fakeness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand the threshold of the house of my God, than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the Lord of our God, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. 
<clears throat> when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his, aware, and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. You never thought you'd be so excited to see 2021, did you? We're all really excited. We're here, and we made it through 2020, and <clears throat> it's great, except, you know, we're right where we were at the beginning of 2020, right? We don't really know what 2021 has in store for us, and who knows, and you can make all the best plans in the world, but who knows how that's going to play itself out. And, you know, maybe we do get some murder hornets and some, some uh, coked out pigs in Arkansas again. You know, y'all read that article last year, right? Some pigs that found a stash of cocaine and ate it. And then the pigs were all like running around in Arkansas tearing stuff up. Like that happened in 2020. Like you, there wasn't enough other stuff. <clears throat> but, but we made it. And yet, you know, it, it's that... A new year always brings with it like this anticipation and wonder and, and, you know, resolutions and all the stuff that we normally do with New Year's, right? <clears throat> but it's been making me think about 2020 and this text especially has, has really kind of pulled all of that together. You know, here they are, good Jewish family. They go to Jerusalem for Passover every year. 12 years, you get a, you know, he's 12 now. Jesus in this passage is 12. So we have to assume they've been going to Jerusalem for 12 years since he was born, every year. <clears throat> they travel down there. They do Passover, and they travel back to Nazareth. And I'm not exactly sure how far Nazareth is by, by foot, traveling in a, in a group, but it's more than a day because they made a day's journey before they had to turn around, right? But I feel like New Year's and this reading kind of go together really, really well. I mean... Here are Mary and Joseph going about a, a fairly normal part of their life, right? Although it's once a year and it's, it's a big deal, it's still fairly normal. This is, this is the pattern of their life. And now they have gone to Jerusalem and they've left. They're a day away and they go, huh. Anybody seen Jesus? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Frank, did you see Jesus? Didn't I see y'all playing when we left Jerusalem? Weren't y'all, weren't y'all, you know, smacking each other or something? As we rode and walked and did all the things we did? No, 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 we hadn't seen him. Miss Mary, we haven't seen him. Oh, okay. Well, Henry, you saw him, right? Y'all were, were throwing the ball around. I saw y'all back there at Bethany, right? No, no, uh -uh. I hadn't seen him. I hadn't seen him. So you have to turn around and you walk a day back to Jerusalem. And then you get there and you spend three more days looking for Jesus. Anybody ever lost a kid in the grocery store, in the, in the Walmart, in the, in, the, in the mall, huh? Did you freak out? Do you think Mary freaked out a little bit? Three days, y'all. Presumably four days, because it took a day to get back to Jerusalem, and then three days of searching, and then they found Jesus. <clears throat> when you found your kid in the mall, were you ready to beat him, or were you just real happy to see him? Happy to beat him? <laughs> Yeah, they you that too, right? But this, 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 this experience that we're reading about with Mary and Jesus, it's kind of like how the years go, right? 
Now we're walking through our normal lives, we're doing our normal thing, we do Christmas 2019, we do New Year's 2020, and 2020 hits us in the face. Where'd it go? What happened? Where's Jesus? Whoa! This isn't what we expected. Something's different. We've got to walk back a day. We've got to spend 30 days looking. Where are we going to find Jesus? Well, apparently we're going to find Him in 2021. But each year includes this. We have no idea on this journey, in this journey, where we will see God. We have no idea where God will appear. We have no idea when we'll have that experience of God where we go, holy cow, this is that moment. This is that place. This is that thing. <clears throat> that moment and that story that I've always heard my mom, my dad, my grandparents, my uncle, my friends, whoever, talk about when they experience God in some new and powerful way. This is it. This is my moment. And I guarantee you, everybody in here has had a moment. And if you haven't had a moment, you're going to have a moment at some point in time. And maybe you didn't have one big moment. Maybe you had 15 small moments. I don't know. But we've all had the experience of all of a sudden God breaking into places where we're not expect expecting Him. That seems to be happening in this story. Mary, when she gets to the temple, tells Jesus, why have you done this to us? Do you know how much anxiety we've had looking for you for the past four days? I can only imagine, y'all. I've never lost my kids for four days. I've lost them for a few hours, but never for four days. Can you imagine what four days of looking for your kid must feel like? Look at all the anxiety you created for us. And Jesus' response is just, well, why are you looking for me? I am right where I belong. And Mary doesn't get it, apparently. She doesn't understand everything that's going on. But somewhere in her, she, she understands that God is in this and moving because it says, one of the last verses in the text, it says that Mary treasured these moments in her heart. And in Luke's Gospel, we get that at the nativity scene, back at Christmas Eve, when the shepherds showed, and all these people showed, and, and Mary saw all this stuff happening in that stable, right? And she said she treasured this in her heart. Now here we are, 12 years later, and she's still treasuring what God is doing in Christ Jesus in her heart. She may not understand all of it. She may not see how it's all happening. She may not be connecting all of the dots. But she knows that God is doing something in this place. And even though she's anxious, and even though she's just spent three days looking for her child, and even though she's probably ready to tear his ears off, she treasures this moment in her heart. That's what 2020 is for us. 2020 is a day of walking back to Jerusalem, three days of looking, trying to find it, and then looking back at it and realizing that there's stuff in 2020 that we need to treasure in our hearts as well. 2020 wasn't all rainbows and sunshine, to quote Rocky. But I can guarantee you some good things have happened. We are more capable right now, today, January 3rd, 2021, than we were January 3rd, 2020, to reach people remotely by a long ways. Like by a long ways. We, we, we have the opportunity to do ministry with our friends and family who aren't able to be here with us and to those people that we haven't even met yet out on the, inter, you know, the, the interwebs. A ministry that we probably as a church should have been pursuing years ago and 2020 forced us to do that differently. It has. I would argue that in 2020, although our attendance is obviously very much down because we've had swaths of the year where we couldn't even come to the church, and then when we have come back, we've got lots of members who still feel safer at home, and we understand it, and we get it. But that 2020 has taught us something about who we are that we couldn't have learned without the events of 2020. Taught us something about how we care for each other, how we think about each other, how we pray for one another, how we stay connected to one another. We realize that it's harder to do and harder to stay connected to each other than, than maybe we, 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 we initially thought, but that it's worth it. 2020 has not all been just anxiety and heartache, but 2020 has made us better people in some way, short, uh, some way, shape, form, or fashion. It's made us better people individually, but it's also made us better people collectively. You know, I know that like in the schools, 
I know I watch Annie work right now, and the work that she's doing trying to educate students online and in person and all the stuff that's happening. Every teacher at that school, including her, are better at doing things remotely and have more ideas, like it's sparked all these new ideas and all this stuff that's coming out of it. Is it tiresome? Yes. Are they worn out? Absolutely. Are they ready for things to go back to some kind of normal? I bet you. But when we do get back to normal, will they use the gifts and the things that they have gained in 2020 to their advantage in 2021 and 2022? Yes, they will. We have no idea where God will show up. We have no idea when God will appear in our lives and, and break open for us the mysteries of His kingdom. Like Mary, we often walk through this world anxious and worried and concerned. And it's often in the middle of those worries and concern where we encounter God doing what God does. Why are you looking for me? Don't you know that I need to be in my Father's house? Jesus is just doing what Jesus does. And Mary in her anxiety somehow or another recognizes it. And the good news for us today is that 2021 will be absolutely no different. Now, hopefully it won't have the same stuff, right? We'd be dealing with different issues. There won't be a pandemic the entire year. Hopefully by the end of the summer, we're, we're beginning to, to do things a little differently. Hopefully we're, we're moving back to some normal. But 2021, just like 2020, will be a year where we don't know what to expect. We don't know what is out there before us. We don't know what the future holds. But whether we're anxious, or we're excited, or we're scared, or all of the above, what we do know is that God is working in the world around us and absolutely nothing can prevent that from happening. And that as followers of Jesus, our job is to pursue that regardless of what we face, is to seek that in whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. So if you are excited about 2021, if you are worried about 2021, if you are just really happy not to be in 2020 anymore, whatever it is, rest assured that in 2021, just like 2020 and every other year of our life, that God is working, that God is being who God told us He would be, that God is with us, will never leave us, and that as we pursue God in this year and all years, that we will find Him. We'll often find Him in ways that we don't expect, but then when we do, like Mary, our goal is to treasure those moments in our heart so that we can get busy being the people God has created us to be, so that we can grow like Christ did in knowledge, so we can grow like Christ did in favor, and so that we can truly step into what it means to be followers of Jesus regardless of the circumstances of our life. It's not always easy, but it's who we're called to be. And we can always be hopeful for a future that includes God in it. Because God will never leave us, regardless of what we face. So regardless of what happens in 2021, whether it is a repeat of 2020, or if all of our dreams come true, we can rest assured that God is working in us and through us, and that our job as Christians is to pursue it, to see it, and to respond to it. Amen. Together, together, let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are on form three are found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church, especially for the congregations of our companion diocese in Tohoku in Japan, may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Morris, our bishop, James and Charles, our retired bishops, Ashley, our priest, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in all the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on Alex, Bishop Jenkins, Jen the Jenkins family, Carlette and Ricky, MacArthur, David, Jane, Olson, Gary, Helen, Tommy, the Fenneman family, Suzanne, the Richard family, Kitty, Trinity, Iris, Connie, Lily, the Johnson family, Don, Charlie, Jesse, Gary, Virginia, Teela, Wayne, Marilyn, Philip, Judy, Jimmy, Curtis, the Panek family, the Dupree family, and the rest of those on our long-term prayer list, which can be found in our emailed newsletter, and all who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Charles McKinnon and Charlton Mills. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray you watch over all those serving in our country, especially Christian, Tannis, Austin, Reese, Denise, Edward, Matthew, Denver, Jamie, and Chance. We give thanks to you for the blessings of this life, especially those celebrating birthdays, Ryan, Jessica, Addie, and Don. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to share the peace from a distance, and if you're watching online, I invite you to share the peace in the comments.
<clears throat> Peace, guys. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, a few quick announcements. First, if you're visiting with us, particularly online, welcome. We're very glad that you're here, and we, we would love for you to comment and just let us know that you're visiting with us. Um, and if you have any prayer needs or any other needs we might be able to assist you with, please let us know. Um, <clears throat> want to remind you guys, this Wednesday, the 6th, is Epiphany. We will do our Epiphany service here at 6 o'clock. Um, we're going to do an Epiphany pageant. We're going to kind of play it by ear, because I don't know who will show and who won't. So whatever, you know, we'll make it work, I promise. But we're gonna, it's going <laughs> to... I'd love to tell you this is who all the parts will be, but I can't do that just yet. So if you are um, available and, and, and interested, please come. Um, we'd love to have some children come to participate in the pageant. And it will be much simplified and much, you know, it, it, it'll be a very simple service. But nonetheless, we will have an epiphany service um, this coming Wednesday. Um, communion to go, just if you're, if you're participating in that uh, and anything changes, please let us know. Or if you'd like to participate and learn more about communion to go, let us know. The 2021 calendar for flowers for the year is up in the back. Um, please fill in your name by whatever weekends you would like to provide flowers for the altar. And uh, then Jessica will reach out to you the week before to get details and whatnot. <clears throat> um, the offertory, because we can't pass the basket around as always, guys, or as it's become our custom, it's on this table. And we ask you at communion when you come forward to either place your offering in it, or if you gave online, there's the giving card online is there. Or if you would, um, you know, if you have any other request anything you need to you'd like to communicate to us please place it in the basket and if you'd like to know how to give online take one of these little green cards back to your pew with you and it'll tell you all about it um the prayers of the people please continue to use the pop at stpatsla.org email address and there's still a few a few of you i think who aren't getting the wednesday emails if you're not getting those please let me or jessica know we'll, re, we'll reset your name inside the system and and get that um get that up and going sometimes it has glitches and we don't know exactly why um, a quick update about Tommy Watson. Many of you, obviously, you know that Patsy um, died on the 26th. Um, Tommy then had surgery on the 30th. Um, they were grafting some skin, or they grafted a piece of skin to his head where he had the cancer on his head. He's still in the hospital. His, 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 he's doing okay. Um, he's in a lot of discomfort and pain from a lot of the stuff they're doing to treat him, not necessarily the surgery itself, but the IVs and all that business. Um, and as far as a service for Patsy goes, we're, we don't know when that is yet. As soon as we know, we will communicate that to the church. But we're obviously letting Tommy get, get through this surgery, get home, get some normal back into his, his day, and then we'll, we'll schedule a, a service for Patsy. So though, I know a couple of you have asked me. That's what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> on the 11th, which is a week from tomorrow, it's the National Championship football game. Um, I, I think the kickoff is at 7, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to double-check that. The email we send tomorrow will have the right kickoff. But um, Pete Williams Barbecue, who's running, um, it's owned and operated by Jermaine Williams, the son of Pete Williams. Um, he and I met a few weeks ago. He did a, a, a Christmas food thing here in the parking lot. He said, hey, let's get together and do something else. I said, that's great. Let's do it. So he's going to come out and he's going to cook for us. And we're going to put the big blow up screen outside and we're going to watch the football game, at least probably half of it, um, out here on the grass. Um, it'll be a br bring your own chair. If you want any beverages, bring your own beverages. And we will watch football, and you can root for whoever you want. Um, you got your pick, either Alabama or Ohio State. I don't, you know, I know all of you have mixed feelings there. Maybe you hope that they both to lose somehow. I don't know. Whatever. But um, just trying to do something, guys, that gives us an opportunity to be together, but still observe the social distancing. Um, obviously, we'll wear masks, and we'll sit in our family groups, and we won't be intermingling a whole lot, but it'll at least give us a chance to, to be in the space with some others. If the weather's nasty or if it looks like it's going to be super cold, we'll probably cancel. But it, right now, last I looked at the weather, it looks like it's supposed to be okay. So um, if you're available, we'd love for you to come out and hang out with us for that. And then um, <clears throat> last, and certainly not least as far as announcements go, um, at our last vestry meeting in December, I was supposed to tell you this like two weeks ago, and I for completely forgot. Um, the vestry talked about how are we going to do our annual meeting for 2021, because, you know, there's stuff we have to vote on, like um, new vestry members and whatnot. And since we still can't gather together, we'd have to do that vote electronically. And there's not really a whole lot of electronical options that are electronic options that I think work really well for the diversity of, of knowledge that we have as it relates to technology in our church congregation. 
So we had a lot of conversation about how do we do this, what do we do, and one of the things the vestry landed on was um, what we'd like to do is amend our bylaws for this one year that will allow all of our vestry members to extend their term by one year. So every, and everybody on the vestry has agreed to do this. So basically, we just everybody who's serving on the vestry will serve one more year, and then when we get to 2022, we'll do our normal, those people who should have rolled off this year will roll off. And then what that does for us at annual meetings, it prevents us from having to do a vestry election electronically, which pulling that off would be tricky. And then the only thing we'll have to do electronically is a, um, is a budget approval by the, at the annual meeting, which is required that all of you vote on. So we'll send the budget out electronically a few days before, and then we'll have a survey in there that y'all fill out that's literally put your name in there and click yes or no. And then we'll take the results of that three days later, and we'll, we'll have a, either a budget that's approved or a budget that we need to work on, depending on what you guys tell us. Uh, before that happens, we'll do a video that goes out to everyone that does a, 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 a presentation. Drew will present to us the budget, explain it to us, and all of those things. So <clears throat> our current bylaws give us leeway for amending our bylaws. Um, the only caveat to that is, is that we're supposed to make this initial announcement 30 days before the next vestry meeting. And our next vestry meeting is the third Tuesday of this month. So I'm like a week late because I forgot to tell you guys. I'm sorry, I do apologize. But um, that is our kind of our plan at this point in time. There will be emails starting tomorrow going out um, telling everyone what we're planning to do. And then at that vestry meeting, um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to. To, to send us an email or whatnot beforehand, but this seemed to us to be the easiest solution for vestry elections in such an odd and awkward year. We got a pretty good vestry in place. Um, they, they've done really good work in the midst of all this COVID stuff. And, and most importantly, guys, they're all willing to do it another year. So, you know, let's let them do it. Um, if you have any questions about that, please see me, Beth, or anybody on the vestry, and we'll, we'll be happy to, to explain, answer whatever questions you might have there. And then uh, our last is birthdays and anniversaries. Does anybody have a birthday and anniversary they're celebrating this week? That's what I thought. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the many blessings of this life. We thank you especially for all of those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Pray that you would be with them as they begin another year. Give them a sense of your love and grace wherever they may be. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. I'm in. Happy birthday. I mean, uh, I'm sorry? Anniversary. I'm sorry. Look, I can't keep it all straight. How many, how many, how, where's, where, where's he at? I normally like to put him on the spot. How many, how many are we celebrating? Twelve? Whew. It's a long time. Anyhow. Any other announcements I'm forgetting? Anybody? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into, into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before He died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when He had given thanks to you, He broke it, gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat, this is My body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of Me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim His resurrection. We await His coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to You, O Lord of all, presenting to You from Your creation this bread and this wine. We pray You, gracious God, to send Your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and His blood of the new covenant. Unite us to Your Son and His sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through Him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Patrick, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons through Jesus Christ our Lord, firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Again, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Hear us, O Heavenly Father, and with your word. And Holy Spirit, bless and sanctify this bread, that it also may be the sacrament of the precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who took bread and said, This is my body. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us all in everlasting life. Together, using the post-communion prayer found on page 366, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Merry Christmas. Get our last one in. <laughs>